hear clack. It resonates with national uh, presence. You seem to have branched out in many facets, many sectors, many areas of our national life, and you seem to really, really go all the way up and you fly really high. You were very vocal when it no. comes to politics. And no, <laughs> you have made, I have a brother who died recently. It was a uh, DAP was next to him. The blessing, blessing, blessing was permanent secretary, federal minister of uh, external affairs. He was Nigerian permanent representative at the United Nations. And uh, my time totally took over from him. So, uh, I have this. Then I lost my other brother, Major General H.U. Clark. There's, there was a man called Becca Delmo. Becca Delmo was born in, in those days about. 19, uh, no, 1824 or something like that. He was a very wealthy businessman. He used to trade with Royal Niger Company. And he had his uh, post at Ganagana Island. He was very wealthy to the extent that he bought a ship called MV Bacadermo that he used to travel from Wari to Lagos to Accra, come back, buy goods and come back. When going, he carry um, palm oil, everything there. He has to buy it from John Root later. Now, that ship is gone. He, he had a compound, palace, they call it almost a palace. He had a compound that was the British people in 1930. Chadwick, in his intelligent report, said Berkeley Edmund's compound was as large as the, the palace of Oba. He described the houses that were there. Glass house for his visitors. He married out five of his daughters to white people. They don't understand English, in our language, our women do not. So I asked the question in my book, what language were they speaking? So they deal with goods, buy, go to Lagos, buy goods, white um, European goods, and come to worry to sell. That formed the worry main market today. So his children, Pludu, his, grand, his uh, son, was, very, was also wealthy. But they had about a hundred wives. And the children he had, he taught to eat that he built houses for all of them. So if you go to Kabudo, which boy you will be there one day, you will see part of the community, town, divided into two. One part, Bakhtarimo, the other part, the community. So, uh, my father took over from his father. My father used to be a poster. Possa means somebody who takes notes, uh, this and so on. In the uh, MV Bacadelmo, you to go with them to Lagos and so on. So what am I saying? It's a family trait. I took the, my character from my great-grandfather, my grandfather, my father. My father died in 1991, leaving us 32 children behind. 75 children and grandchildren. So we have produced, but as I said, we have a very strong character. JP, Blessing, and myself, we have the same mother. And we grew up together in our mother's, in our grandmother's place. We used to eat together from the age of five. And we ate together until J.P. is dead in 2020. We were very close. I miss his frankness, his rudeness sometimes to me. He doesn't fear anybody. Neither do you. Well, he took after me then. <laughs> I, don't, I didn't take after him. B.A. was a diplomat, so we don't talk about it. But J.P. was a father. 
That's why he says his native name is Pepe. Johnson Pepe Clark. So, it's a family. Uh, we got it from the so family. So, those days when he writes, when he was doing all his writings, where were you and how did you fit into that uh, thing? Mm, very good. JP went to University of Ibadan. He had his colleagues, the Franco Kigbo, and all of them, they were there. Walisha and Kade, they were all colleagues over there and so on. Now, when he finished, he joined Daily Express as a journalist. With the, uh, is it that, the, I had the, no, the man who owned the university in Ogun State, the state university, what is Nobody. it there? Nubajo. Be, yes, yes. He was the editor of the Daily Express at that time. He wrote a little for Tribune, I think. Then he went to America. He attended Prince, um, Princeton University and wrote a book, America the America. And since then, they didn't welcome him back to America. What am I saying? I miss JP for his frankness, for his uprightness, for his uh, simplicity. You, you can't see JP one day in suit. He has not worn, oh, he's tying a good wrap and so on. One dress is for the every occasion. He was very original. When, so when he died, I didn't know that he left a will. So they write to me that at the uh, University of Lagos, at the J.P. Clark House, all of them were there. When he left his last testament, he said, when I die, I should not be put in mortuary. I should not be, be kept waiting to be buried. If the, not, if the Muslims can bury themselves in one day, what prevents a man like me being buried in three days? I have, four daughter, I have four children, one boy, three girls. The little have acquired that you blow trouble over them. And uh, I want to be buried within three days in my village, Kiabodo, by my, in my room. My grave. So the third, uh, he died on Tuesday. On Thursday, my brother, Bessin, phoned me that the children said they want to take their father's body home. During this uh, uh, youth demonstration. I said, how do they do it? No way. He said they will go by road or by, by boat. I said, no. They think, let me think about it. The following morning, I got up and called my people. I said, come. Phone my sister, because she had for me in Jabodo. He phoned her. I said, go and look at JP's house, whether it has been flooded. So they went. He said, it has not been flooded. So I said, then I said, can we dig a grave there? He said, for, for what? I said, to where uh, JP will be buried. He said, no. JP has a grave dug by himself, by him, for him and his wife, for the past three years now. No water inside. So I could create my door. Arrange, shattered plane that went to Lagos because of the demonstrations. I had to hire a helicopter to Lakey, where the wife and children were staying, leave them from there to airport. They came, they reached Azaba by six o'clock and got to my village by nine o'clock. And he was buried that night. And he said he doesn't want any ceremony. But the people say, no, 
they will, they will, but the children were angry, so that was nothing they could. So, I'm very happy that I gave him what he wanted. So the wife, if I prefer the book clerk, it's a daughter's daughter, a Pijibo day, phoned me after the burial of the husband. He said, I will remain forever part of the Clark family. And when I die, I know I come from a big family. My body should be taken to careful to be buried by my husband. He said, we have a, an organized family, wonderful family. So, and then when I saw the number of publications in newspaper everywhere. I have not seen someone who have been so rich enough about my JP when he died. I'm not alone. They have written about them. And, and you are you are the first of them all. Yes. And you are the last man standing. I'm the last man standing. How does that make you feel? Eh? How does that make you feel? Well, well, there was a time. I said, in my going to the village uh, gossips, he's changing his younger brothers with himself, so he doesn't want to die. I think you follow what I mean. Mm -hmm. So when I'm done dying, they're accusing me that I'm a, I'm a, I'm, I'm a wizard, that I'm a so, 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 so. But because I live in township, I live where you both live, they don't believe. I don't believe that they don't also believe. So, what am I saying? At the time, I said, group of people say, of work born rarely. That is, everybody, whether they are twins or triplets, everybody has his own lifespan. God created for him. So, if you have to live life all over again, are there changes you would have loved to make, you know, in your trajectory? No. Through life? No. I would like to repeat it. The same way? Same way, but with some improvement as time goes on. If we hear the name Edwin Clark, what do you want us to remember you by? The man who is brutally frank. That's the title of my memoirs. Brutally frank. And uh, if you won't mind, how many more time you have, I would. It's a short one. I could have liked to play the Gawans as uh, he summoned everything in that that page. If you don't mind. I so saw in this book, uh, the foreword written by Yakubu Gowan says, uh, and I'm reading the last paragraph. This is teasing the public. In Brutally Frank, Chief E.K. Clark not only takes us on a journey through his varied life, but also guides us through a story of Nigeria spanning more than 70 years. E.K.'s memoir recounts all aspects of his life, personal, political, economical, and government. And we are left with a clear image of an extremely knowledgeable and different diligent man committed to nation and service. Whilst there are many other accounts of the affairs of this country available in policy makers, researchers, students, and future generation, Brutally Frank is a painstaking and enriching addition to the archives. I recommend the memoir to all interested in the life story of this indomitable Chief E.K. Clark. This is by General Yakubu Gowon retired, the former head of state of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And this in itself speaks so loudly of how highly he thinks of you. Thank you. After losing my GP, your brother, I thought there's need for me to hook in the writing of my own memoirs to tell the world the role I played and to know what family they are. Because many people feel that some of us are hanging on 
I just somebody was telling me the other day that uh, it was uh, Jonathan, President Jonathan, who brought me to, to Abuja. I said, nonsense. I visited Abuja years before Jonathan left university. And uh, that he bought this house for me. I said, no. Jonathan never paid the one year rent for me in any house. I bought this house with my own money, realized from my property in, a, in, a, in, Lake, in Victoria Island, Lagos. So, and I, the other said, yes, I, I have a university that he built. I said, no, Jonathan did not contribute a cover to the University of Edwin Clark University. I know, he passed it to the council, like any other university, private university. So that's it. So I said, look, it is better for people to know more about me, how I came to this town, uh, during the time of uh, Abasha, Babagida. So I thought I should write something. So, and you decided to term it brutally frank. And uh, yes, because I've offended, I would uh, I would definitely offend so many people who you don't like what I've written about them, or the children of people I've written about, because I I, I don't I said it all. So that is the position. Well, I I am looking forward to reading that book. Thank you and very much. I want to see the number of people you offended. And I hope they forgive you. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, I always say so that if in my defending my country or protecting my country or being patriotic, I've offended anybody in my speeches, they should forgive me. I've said so. Good. I, I've, it's better to, to, uh, to offend people than to tell lies because it won't stand. So, on the softer side, uh, this is Veering into the soft side. I, I want to believe that with all this boom that you exude all the time, there is an aspect of you that is soft. Can you let us into that aspect? Like what? Is it that, you know, really touch that button. That's, you know, that's button that really softens you up. Because, you know, to the general public, you are like one hard well, cookie. No. Mm -hmm. Very the, difficult to crack. No, the, I think uh, I don't I have not changed. Um, I make friends at all levels, and uh, I respect people, whether you are young or not. I remember um, children coming to say hello to me, they don't, they've never met me before, and so on. I think there must be something in my approach to other people. Is there any moment that has really touched you so much so that you wept like a child? I think the death of my my father in 1990, 1990 December. And when we were burying him, I couldn't hear. I cried out, shouted by the graveside. And uh, and when Professor J.P. Clark died, it came to me as something I never thought of, that had never occupied my mind. Because he, a week earlier, he told me that you must go home. What are you doing in Abuja? And I said, why? He said, uh, you, you have to be in your house. If death comes, you die in your house. I said, why? Everybody will die wherever God asks him to, where he will stay. When you will, uh, you don't know about that. So he said, okay. My, bro my brother B.A. was, uh, blessing was sick. So he said, would you send for the children? I said, no. We will deal with it. My mother's last born is a doc medical doctor, is a professor. Med medical doctor. So I sent for him to come and take care of blessing. So he came. But when he wanted to go back to, to worry, he went to see JP and got to JP. He said, brother, you're not well. 
but he didn't know. Every they were taking a malaria tablets or sort of things. He didn't know, not knowing that he had a, a, a disease which claimed his life. So I look at all that. I said, no one will live forever. Let me put my thoughts in right in every aspect of my life. In fact, uh, JP has written his vo vo voyage, his book he wrote, which I look at and I collected so many things. Which is your favorite book of his? All the books he's written, all the poems he's written. Which is your favorite? Just name it. Ozidi Saga. Ozidi. Have you seen it? Heard of it, but not read it yet. Yes. No, it's a, they are volumes. So, that's it. Some people describe you as a ladies' man, and that was because you know you made the news not too long ago, not too many years ago, of marrying a damsel at your twilight. And 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 how would you react to that? I, I told you the family I came from, the the background, my family background. In my place, even in those days, a man, family man, father, the big father marries many wives and of those women some of them are young and our people believe at that time that when the father dies the children will be will, be, will inherit the wives and that's what was happening at that time and sometimes some of them have got children who are even senior to me You, 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 if, uh, and so you don't mind any of your children in so, your wives? No, we have stopped that. That is gone. What I'm now saying is that about the wife you mentioned, what not a young woman? Even though I'm 95 or uh, 90 something and when I married her, she had been a medical uh, a doctor for 35 years. So you know her age, you should know the age where. Uh, what should be her age? There's no harm if a man of 90 married a woman of 60 something. So he was not as young as you people, many people thought. So that is the. And I. Listen, I like the beautiful things created by God, whether you are a man or a woman. And the woman ends up with courtship also. But admire people, clean heart, people with clean hearts, people who are not arrogant. Because I have to look back at your family. When you look at some of the people giving out problem in Nigeria today, they have no good family background. And so, on that note, we want to say it's been such a pleasure engaging you on this program. Mm -hmm. Titled Conversation with History. I must confess, this is the most very thorough interview, thorough and detailed and lively program I've ever given. I, I engage in. There's nobody who had interviewed me as you have done today. So I'm very grateful to you. Thank you so much, sir. <laughs>